Welcome to Texas Cannabis Collective Weekly Update. I'm Jesse Williams. This update is brought to you by Thrive Apothecary. Thrive Apothecary offers an experience truly unique from anything else in Texas, a full-service cannabis solution that is doctor-owned and offers customers every level of cannabis legally available in Texas. Visit thrivetx.com for more information. Oak Cliff Cultivators is a sponsor of Texas Cannabis Collective and Lone Star Collective. Oak Cliff focuses on quality assurance with their hemp products while providing customer service to help you discover cannabinoids to meet your needs. For more information on their products, quality, or to shop online today, visit www.oakcliffcultivators.com or contact them at info at oakcliffcultivators.com. And Austinite Cannabis Company. Austinite Cannabis Company is an Austin, Texas, locally owned, family operated producer and seller of handcrafted cannabis products such as CBD, CBG, CBN, and Delta 8 made from hemp in Texas. For more information, visit austinitecannabis.co or you can visit their storefront location at 2009 East Cesar Chavez Street, Austin, Texas. This week, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, which is part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, put forward a proposal published in the Federal Register on Thursday. The proposing changes are to clarify that having a doctor's recommendation for medical marijuana or any other Schedule One drug is not a valid excuse for a positive drug test for federal employees. Current policy lists marijuana as the lone drug where passive exposure is not acceptable, while the new proposal states that it is not acceptable and explicitly lists poppy seeds as an example along with marijuana. This will likely create confusion on what is acceptable use, as hemp products that are under 0.3% will still cause drug test failures despite no longer being Schedule 1. This comes on the heels of the U.S. Navy informing its sailors that using Pepsi's new Rockstar Energy drink is off-limits as the new drink containing hemp seed oil will result in positive drug tests for marijuana. Despite that the hemp seed oil barely contains traces of CBD and likely very little traces amounts of THC, if any at all, the Navy War College is pushing the notion that the drink will definitely cause positive drug screenings on service members. And that, despite the legality of hemp in the U.S., the substance is off-limits for service members. The notice sent out by the agency stays consistent with the 2019 Department of Defense policy announcement barring all active and reserve service members from using hemp products, including CBD. The Drug Enforcement Agency has effectively acknowledged that the seeds of marijuana plants are generally uncontrolled and legal, regardless of how much THC might end up being in the end product of the buds, if those seeds were cultivated. The agency stated that while marijuana seeds were controlled in the past at all times, that is no longer the case because of the federal legalization of hemp. Now that hemp has been removed from the Controlled Substances Act's definition of marijuana, all parts of the cannabis sativa L plant are uncontrolled as long as they don't exceed 0.3% THC. This includes the seeds as they do not yet contain the amount of THC needed to bring the portion of the plant over the limit. A federally funded study has found that feeding cows hemp helps them to stay calmer, reduce stress levels, and lie down more. Relaxed steers tend to be healthier steers and would be very beneficial to ranchers in reducing stress-induced respiratory infections and other health issues that take place with cattle over periods of their life cycles. Researchers at Kansas State University recently published the results of the study recently in the Scientific Reports outlet. Over the course of two weeks with 16 Holstein steers, half of the steers consumed traditional feed and the other half were given a mixture of feed with industrial hemp. The research team tracked their movements while monitoring their blood for cortisol and progestandins, which are biomarkers for stress. The hemp-fed steers were noted as spending more time lying down and having lower levels of stress hormones. Researchers at the University of Mississippi have analyzed data from several sources using a difference in differences designed to compare trends in foster care systems in states that have legalized cannabis with those in non-legal states. Results showed that there was a 10% decrease in foster care admissions on average, which included reductions in placements due to physical abuse, neglect, parental incarceration, and misuse of alcohol and other drugs. The authors of the study state that our most conservative estimates imply that legalization causes at least a 10% decrease in total admissions to foster care, with larger effects in years further after legalization and for admissions into foster care due to specific child welfare concerns. This comes after a recent announcement by a U.S. District Judge in Texas that they had lost faith in the Texas Rangers sex trafficking investigation involving a state foster care system and was turning the case over to the federal investigators. In mid-March, allegations surfaced about potential abuse and even sex trafficking involving girls who lived at the refuge in Bastrop. 
according to a letter from a state employee filed in federal courts. I am Jesse Williams, and that will do it for this week of review at the Lone Star Collective and Texas Cannabis Collective. Catch it every week and visit TexasCannaCo.com to subscribe to the articles as they appear. 